Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second edition of Steelmint's Engage. Engage 2.0 focuses on evolving global steel industry dynamics, with the industry prioritizing decarbonization as a way forward. The series will zoom in on the challenges associated with global dec decarbonization measures in the iron and steel industry and what it would take to implement the energy transition in the industry. The agenda of Engage 2.0 is to understand the perspective of industry leaders on a broad spectrum of topics and enable our clients to develop a better understanding of emerging industry dynamics. I am Nirmallo Dev, Technology Editor, Steel Mint, your host for the session. To start with, I would like to thank the Ministry of Steel Government of India and the Indian Steel Association for extending their support to Engage 2.0. I also heartily thank NMD, JSW Steel and Tata Steel for sponsoring this brainstorming event. A word for those sitting in the audience, Kindly don't forget to mention your name and company name uh, while sending across queries for our expert, for our expert today. Uh, we would try to field as many relevant questions as possible. Our topic for this session is cutting metallurgical coke usage in blast furnace steel making and possible decarbonization pathways for Indian blast furnace steel makers. I am delighted to welcome Mr. Anil Chaudhary, a widely acknowledged leader and amongst the most respected professionals in the industry today, currently serving as Group CEO, Metals and Mining Vertical, SR. Mr. Chaudhary, superannuated from the services of Steel Authority of India Limited a short while ago, where he served for almost 37 years. He has over 44 years of rich industry experience. Mr. Chaudhary has steered the efforts of industry and commerce bodies like FICI, CII, PHDCCI, and SRPMI for the development and growth of the industry and economy. Welcome to Engage 2.0, Mr. Chaudhary. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, can I sir? start with my deliberation? Uh, of course, sir. I would uh, yes. request you to start with your... Uh, Thank you. Address. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nirmalya Dev. Uh, and Steel Mint for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity of uh, interacting uh, a, a wide spectrum of uh, participants today. And uh, I've been told that uh, normally Steel Mint events are attended by the thousands of persons. So through this medium, I will be able to convey uh, my thoughts uh, to a large audience and for uh, which definitely Steel Mint uh, uh, deserves a uh, kudos and uh, they deserve to be congratulated uh, for uh, this particular uh, event. Uh, friends, you all know that uh, without coking coal, it is not possible to make coal from the BF, uh, BF route. Uh, maybe in the world, if we see today, only two technologies of uh, iron making are available. And without iron, you cannot make the steel. So iron ore has first to be converted into uh, iron uh, only then you can proceed to make the uh, steel. Uh, as far as uh, the world is concerned, uh, maybe now if we leave the Asia, maximum output uh, is coming from the uh, our DRI EF route. Whereas if we see uh, the Asian uh, part, we find that the most of the steel, that is 60% of the steel, when we include say India, Korea, Japan, China, most of the steel is coming from the BF, BF route where you essentially need metallurgical coal. Without metallurgical coal, it is not possible to make steel or make iron first at the first stage uh, from the blast furnace. So for the blast furnace purposes, it becomes very, very important. Now the issue comes, uh, why we use the blast furnace at all when the other technologies are available. So for that, there is a simple answer that uh, blast furnace had been the, I would say, uh, most classical way of making the steel. It gives us the economy of scale. You can produce the uh, steel in bulk and also the steel which we are producing, uh, it at times gives you better quality than you are, or iron or uh, iron which you produce through blast furnace route gives you the better quality than uh, otherwise you are able to achieve making it through uh, DRI route. So this blast furnace technology is going to stay for some more time because if you see in the last uh, four years and also in the coming four years, 
if we take the eight years together, about 38 million ton of capacity has already come or will be coming through blast furnace route only. So till 2065, these blast furnaces will be working because the average life of blast furnace in our country is close to 40 years. You take the example of uh, steel making or iron making at uh, Tata Steel, whether it is at Kalinga Nagar or at Jamshedpur, even new furnaces or new facilities are coming with the help of blast furnace. Kadapa Steel at uh, Nagar, uh, sorry, at Andhra Pradesh, they also envisage the blast furnace technology. Naganar, it is through blast furnace. Then you pick up the plants of uh, JSW, uh, any plant, Dolby or Vijayanagar, JSPL. <clears throat> they all are, uh, they have, all have established uh, steel making either through blast furnace or it will be through blast furnace only. So the uh, my uh, uh, matter of saying here is that blast furnace is uh, going to remain the uh, dominant route of making iron or steel in our country at least at, in the last 30 to 40 uh, uh, in the in the coming 30 to 40 years. It was the uh, dominant uh, uh, method of making steel today. Around 60% of steel is being made with the help of BF, BF route, and it will continue to be so. So now when we find that the no other technologies are workable in our country, you know, uh, DRI route is very much workable. Worldwide, people have been going for it, uh, DRI, EF route. Because we do not have the requisite inputs which are required for making steel through DRI, so we have to essentially go in for BF. Now, we do not have the gas which we need for the purpose of uh, reduction of iron ore or reduction of pellet uh, or say uh, lump in the DRI. We have to use coal. The coal which is used in DRI furnaces, which is being done by the secondary sector in our country, that is much more polluting than what pollution we get by making steel through BF route. Or syngas, that is another thing which we have been talking, uh, that is also going to take some more time to come into effect. Maybe at some places it has been working, but the cost is so high. And also the coal which is available in our country that may not be uh, able to fulfill the requirement which is required for making this in gas. Of course, Niti Aayog has very recently formed a committee to look into all these things. And uh, we will be going by the recommendations of the uh, government or the Niti Aayog as they are <clears throat> placed uh, in the public platform. And also we find that uh, for sin gas, the government is going to give some incentives for making uh, uh, syn gas and then using it for the purpose of steel or other purposes, they are going to get the incentives. But let us wait and watch for that. And today we concentrate on why this uh, uh, steel making through BF is so important and above all, what we can do to cut down the uh, consumption of med coal in the blast furnace. Why uh, cutting down? Because car, uh, coal is the main coal is converted into coke and then coke is the main source of uh, uh, a reduction of iron ore in the blast furnace and that causes the maximum CO2 gases or that causes the maximum harm to the uh, environment. So let us uh, work out that how we can uh, see to it that we are able to cut down the consumption of uh, uh, coal in the uh, blast furnace. Uh, the demand for steel in our country has been increasing. Today, the country is having capacity of around 145 million ton, which has gone up by somewhere around, say, 20 million ton in the last few years. But the production, uh, as we see last year in 21, the production was somewhere around 118 million ton. And out of that, if we see if the 60% was through BF route, so how much coal we consumed? We consumed at least 60 million ton plus coal for making uh, 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 steel through blast furnace route alone. And in our country, the steel, uh, coal, metallurgical coal is not available. Whatever small quantities are mined by uh, Coal India subsidiaries, BCCL and CCL, that is meant for uh, 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 sale, or that is uh, uh, sold as the thermal coal if it is not picked up by sale. So reason is that they do not have the adequate watch list for this. Now, if we uh, uh, move further in this, we have been importing the entire quantity of med coal today <clears throat> from the other parts of the world. And, you know, uh, the uh, uh, geopolitical developments have forced us uh, to buy uh, med coal at a price which is quite exorbitant. Recently, you must have heard that the price of coal, med coal, it has touched a new peak of $660 per ton. I'm talking of today. Some of the shipments have taken place at that level. And even the uh, the PCI coal, which is again 
a requirement for our blast furnaces to bring down the consumption of coke or to make the economical manufacturing of uh, steel it has also touched a new high, uh, high of uh, 586 per ton and if this way the price continue it will be highly uh, uneconomical to make steel uh, even through this uh, uh, met coal route uh, that is by the help of uh, coke now going forward our requirement for coal is going to uh, increase only as we are going to make more and more steel the national steel policy friends as you know it talks of uh, going up to 300 million ton of steel by the turn of the current decade and out of this the national steel policy states that at least 60% <clears throat> earlier it was 50% but later on it was revised to 60% that 60% of steel will continue to be there through uh, blast furnace route now if it is through blast furnace route again we have to be dependent on the countries uh, like uh, 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 australia indonesia usa canada mozambique for uh, getting the coal and being dependent on others means uh, it creates so much of scarcity for us and third as you know coal is the most polluting uh, thing so for there are the three compelling reasons which forces the which, which which force us to go in for cutting down the consumption of coal in the blast furnace that is the economic uh, value second is the scarcity and third is the uh, uh, emission now the question comes that but all we have to do together as i said that india will continue to remain dependent on the <clears throat> bf bf route for the purpose of uh, steel making the only thing we can do that we can work together to cut down the emissions uh, in the blast furnace we can uh, uh, reduce it to a level which is uh, uh, i would say acceptable uh, of course uh, we are talking of uh, carbon uh, uh, neutrality by 2070 many of the countries have taken a target of going carbon neutral 2050 by by 2050 so i feel that at least from the steel industry point of view for our country it will be very difficult to go carbon neutral by 2050 the only thing we can talk of uh, reducing the carbon emission we cannot talk of zero carbon emission we can talk of uh, net zero only that uh, we will be working together to reduce it now what all is required to be done to bring down the consumption of coal and the associated emission uh, by making steel from bf buf technology first and the foremost thing is that the mix of the raw material we have to uh, look at the mix of the raw material today if you see that uh, many of the companies in the country particularly in the public sector including sail rinl and also the nagarnar plant which would be coming up they don't envisage using pellet in the blast furnace they want to mix uh, uh, iron uh, with the help of that is hot metal with the help of uh, 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 say sinter and also the lump now the use of sinter and lump it consumes so much of coal that it creates so much of uh, 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 emission and it it generates so much of co2 that if we are able to use the pellet we are able to cut it down by at least 30% emission can be cut down like uh, in normal course if from, from blast furnace uh, we are generating say 1.2 ton of uh, emission for uh, 1 ton of hot metal and if we use uh, the pellets the mix of pellet and sinter that is 70% pellet and 30% sinter we can cut down the emission by at least 30% the reason is simple that moment you start using the pellet the productivity of the blast furnace it goes up significantly i have seen certain furnaces working in the country we always say that the smaller blast furnaces cannot give us the better productivity but i have seen many furnaces working in the country which are having productivity of 3 plus small furnaces by using 65 to 70% of pellet and 30% of sinter in the burden in uh, our company itself at hajira which is now with arcelor mittal uh i was discussing with my blast furnace guy he told me that in our company that a small furnace of 2250 meter cube that was giving us a daily production of 6800 ton which translates into a productivity of more than 3 by using a mix of 65% pellet and 35% sinter so first and foremost thing is that we have to pay attention Uh, to our uh, 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 mix or the burden which we are charging to the uh, blast furnace if we are able to uh, bring in more of pellets or a ideal combination of pellets and uh, uh, pellet and sinter we can work 
to bring down the carbon emission by at least uh, uh, 30%. And second, friends, our operating practices, which are there, they have been largely responsible uh, for uh, creating the more pollution. We don't care about the distribution of the burden, tapping practices, uh, etc., which always result into uh, in maximization of the fuel rate. Now, if the fuel rate is increasing, definitely your carbon emissions are uh, increasing. And what do you mean by fuel rate? Fuel rate means how much coke plus PCI coal plus nut coke you have been using in the blast furnace. You all know that we need minimum amount of carbon for reducing iron ore uh, into molten uh, iron. Uh, that is uh, maybe 530 kg uh, per ton of uh, hot metal we need. But I believe if you are able to improve upon your practices, or if you are able to uh, improve upon the op operating practices in the blast furnace, this can very well be br br brought down by uh, 15 to 20 kg per ton of uh, hot metal. And this has been practiced, again, uh, I'm talking from my experience only, like even uh, in a company uh, like Sale, we have practices and we have been able to bring down our uh, fuel rate. One may argue we need the minimum carbon, so fuel rate cannot come down. But I'm talking of actual experience which we had, and we had been able to uh, uh, cut it down significantly. Now, friends, apart from coal, there are many other uh, uh, inputs available today which can give us the required carbon for the purpose of reducing the uh, iron ore. And they have been very successfully implemented or they have been very successfully experimented or implemented in some of the furnaces uh, throughout the uh, world and also in our country. Now, what are these fuels which are available with us? You all know that uh, natural gas, it can be, uh, I, I won't say that the natural gas alone can be used in the blast furnace uh, to uh, reduce the iron ore into the uh, molten iron, but we can make the good use of natural gas in the <clears throat> blast furnace, we can at least use it to the extent of 10 to 15 percent. Likewise, the CBM uh, uh, injection that has already been tried in uh, some of the furnaces. And this coke one gas, not at the tour level, but at the shaft level, that is another fuel which is available. And syn gas that can always be injected. So these are the substitute. I'm not talking of hydrogen at this stage because I know hydrogen is a distant reality. Even if I talk of hydrogen, uh, I will be troubling all of you too much. I'm talking of the fuels which are available today and which can be used in the blast furnaces. Of course, uh, economy, we have to look at uh, because natural gas will be workable only when you are able to get the natural gas uh, at a price uh, which is not more than $5 per mm BTU. Getting natural gas, gas at uh, that price uh, maybe it is difficult for the time being, but that day is not very far when we will be able to uh, get it. Today, when the gas price is at, say, uh, $11 or $12 per uh, MMBTU, of course, with this uh, politi uh, uh, geopolitical development, uh, it has been changed to a great extent. Uh, now, the other day, I was listening to one of my friends from uh, Europe. He was telling me that the natural gas price has gone up to 25 euro per MMBTU. So this, these are the exceptional uh, uh, circumstances. But in normal course, if we are able to get it, we can substitute coke, we can substitute PCI coal, if we are able to get the uh, natural gas uh, uh, in, in our country. Now, at least wherever our pipelines are available, government is committed to give the natural gas. That's how we worked out in sale in uh, some of the furnaces, if we can use the natural gas. We made the special provisions for that. And uh, we did some experiments also. We did certain experiments also that uh, if we can use the natural gas, it gave us the almost same results as we are uh, getting uh, by using the uh, coke in the uh, uh, blast furnaces. Uh, then recirculation of BF top gas. We can always use it uh, for uh, recirculating in the blast furnace. The technology is under development. Today, it is not there, but technology is development. Naturally, if we have to do something new, we have to uh, work out the uh, certain things at the lab stage, then at the pilot stage, then at the uh, commercial stage. And as I said that, I won't like to burden you uh, with this hydrogen use, uh, but hydrogen can be a good substitute. And in blast furnace, we can very well use the hydrogen to the extent of 12 to 15%.
SMS has already developed a technology which help us in improving the uh, 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 injection of syn gas and also the hydrogen to the extent of 12 to 15 percent. And one can always use this and one can always ask for a higher price for the steel in the name of green steel. I know once you go in for cutting down the emissions, it has a cost. Once you go in for substitution of the uh, raw materials or inputs uh, in place of coal, if you want to use natural gas, syn gas, or any other gas or CBM, naturally it will have a cost. But at the same time, the carbon credits, which are not there right now in the country for uh, 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 steel making or any other industry, they will be introduced in our country also. And we will be able to get advantage of that. Like in Europe, today, many of the companies, they want to go in for the uh, green steel making by design, not by default or not by compulsion, because they know the carbon credits which they will be getting, that will far outweigh the cost of uh, additional cost of making steel uh, by <coughs> using the uh, coal, uh, by, by using the alternate uh, uh, fuels in the uh, blast furnace. So these are certain technologies which are already working uh, at uh, uh, different places and they have been implemented uh, very very successfully now if you want to cut down the cost of course emissions may not cut down you can always increase the pci we have seen that uh, in some of the furnaces uh, the companies have been able to increase the pci usage to as high as 250 kg naturally we know one ton of pci replaces the one ton of uh, coke now, for making one ton of coke, you need at least uh, 1.5 uh, 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 ton of coal. You need that much of coal because uh, the uh, uh, yield is 0 0.69, 0 0.67 to 69 in case of uh, uh, coal to coke. Now, if you are able to replace it in a way, you have been reducing the consumption of coal. Because one ton of or one kg of uh, PCI replaces one kg of coke. So this means you are bringing down your coke consumption by at least uh, uh, say uh, 400 gram to 500 gram by increasing one kg of PCI in the blast furnace. And this also brings down the cost of production. But it will remain usage of coal. Emissions to that extent will definitely uh, come down. Then today we find that many of the blast furnaces, they are working without any top recovery turbines. In sale, we started the new furnaces. We made it a point that uh, we will put the uh, TRT in all the newer furnaces. And in country today, whatever new furnaces have been coming, they have been using the top recovery turbine for making the power. A blast furnace of around say 4,050 cubic meter can very well give us a uh, power generation of around 15 megawatt. Now, Look at the beauty of it, you are getting power almost free of cost. Only thing, some operational cost is there or some initial capital cost is there, but TRT equipment is available at a cost of not more than 25 to 30 crore. Small operational cost is there, but the amount of emissions you are cutting down by not using the coal in the thermal power plant, that is much more than this. So this may not cut down the coal directly in the blast furnace, but indirectly help us to bring down the usage of coal in the thermal power plant. All said and done in our country, most of the power plants, they have been surviving on coal. They are the thermal power plants. The proportion of uh, renewable energy uh, is uh, uh, not that significant that uh, we can say that if we uh, cut down the, uh, say, uh, uh, energy generation, uh, it will definitely be somewhere through uh, thermal route only. It will not be through uh, this renewable sources. So that cutting down will bring in reduction in the coal consumption, and ultimately it will lead to uh, reduction in the emissions uh, in the environment. Now, we say that we have been capturing uh, uh, BF, uh, 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 this uh, CO2 from the BF, but that carbon which are capturing, it has many uses. Now, many companies are not able to do it. They are, say, uh, they, they, they are of the opinion that after capturing carbon, what to do it? We cannot store the uh, uh, carbon. CO2, we cannot store. We can separate it from the gas, but we cannot uh, store. 
the other day i was discussing with uh, this research and development center of uh, sail and also uh, with srtmi uh, bosses dr mukesh kumar so again the technologies are getting developed uh, that co2 can be converted into uh, uh, of course we know uh, fertilizers we, we know one of the uses but this co2 can very well be converted into ethanol methanol which is a uh, important fuel uh, for the purpose of uh, running our uh, vehicles for the purpose of our transportation so capturing co2 is another uh, thing which is going to help us in reducing the uh, emissions if we capture it the emissions will not be going to the atmosphere we can convert that co2 uh, into the uh, uh, into the uh, 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 atmosphere ca capture it from the uh, source and then convert it into uh, the uh, fuels so to that extent the fuels which are creating uh, 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 this uh, pollution in the environment uh, that will come down along with this there are many other technologies available today in the world which help us in deciding the input for the uh, buf uh, basic oxygen furnace sms had developed a technology in the name of conpro conpro help us to decide the burden in the buf whether we want to charge uh, uh, hot metal we want to charge dri or we want to charge scrap today it is essential that in uh, buf 80% of the burden should be through hot metal only the uh, other things that pig iron or even a scrap they can be used only to the extent of uh, 20% so if we adopt the conpro technology again it is at a uh, developmental stage and this helps us to uh, reduce the electricity consumption and also it helps us to bring down the uh, emission to that extent now coming to the uh, coke making coke as you know it is the main fuel for the blast furnaces today worldwide uh, there are many ways of uh, making the uh, coke but the technologies like which are prevalent uh, in most uh, part of the world are the stem charge batteries or the top charge batteries many of the steel manufacturers in the country they are still uh, relying on the uh, this uh, uh, top charge uh, uh, method of top charge battery for conversion of uh, coke into coal it uses the uh, high quality coal and also the consumption of coke which we are producing through uh, top charge batteries is higher in the blast furnace for making one ton or per ton of uh, hot metal when we compare it with the coke which is made from the uh, stem charge batteries and the cost of operation is also less maybe the cost of putting up uh, stem charge battery is slightly higher initially but if we uh, consider the operational cost which is associated with it we can definitely reduce the overall uh, cost of uh, 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 coke making and also we can reduce the consumption of coke in the blast furnace again that will help us indirectly in reducing the consumption of coal for making per ton of uh, hot metal so these are certain observations which i have that how we can cut down the consumption of uh, coal uh, coke and that uh, uh, leads to consumption of uh, coal uh, in the blast furnaces but apart from that we find that uh, uh, the scarcity of coal which is there today in the market there are quite a few other uh, uh, i would say uh, uh, ways are available of uh, increasing the availability that will take care of uh, our uh, uh, availability and also the cost which we are required to incur for uh, procuring the coal so in fact i have always been talking at the various forums that uh, coal india should come forward and they should increase the production of coking coal and also they should put up the additional facilities for washing of coal in our country today whatever coal is being produced except few million ton Two and a half to three million ton. The balance is being passed on as a thermal coal. This coal can very well uh, be used for the purpose of metallurgical uh, purposes by blending it into the other good coal which we have been importing. If we are able to bring down the ash in this uh, coal to a level of sixteen uh, percent or seventeen percent. Unfortunately, the coal, mud coal, which is coming from the washeries of uh, BCCL or CCL. that is having ash content of more than 
and at times it is even more than 21 percent also so the usage of the which uh, remains uh, very restricted so i feel that if we are able to have uh, more washeries if we are able to have uh, uh, more production of cooking coal then our import dependence which will bring in economies of course that may not uh, cut down the uh, coal consumption but that definitely will bring in consumption of coal or uh, the price of coal because if you source it from the domestic sources it is uh, away from the volatility of the market now that whatever money you are able to save that you can always invest in upgrading your blast furnaces which will again bring down the pollution which will again bring down the emission or which will bring down the greenhouse gases the smaller furnaces can be phased out which are responsible for creating uh, more pollution this is exactly what china has done they have worked very hard on uh, phasing out the uh, old furnaces which have been creating more pollution which are the coke guzzlers or which are not in tune with the today's technology and they have gone in for uh, putting up the larger furnaces which have been helping them to improve the productivity they are able to get more production from the fewer number of furnaces which are less uh, polluting than what they were able to get uh, from the larger number of furnaces which were polluting the atmosphere so i feel that if we are able to increase the domestic production of cooking coal in our country that will definitely help us that will definitely help us in uh, uh, bringing in savings to the main producers and those savings can be utilized uh, for upgrading the uh, technology i have also been uh, requesting uh, uh, this ministry of coal and uh, also from time to time that let us work together in putting up the washeries if you do not have the washeries let the industry put up the washeries you give them the uh, assured supply of coal for the purpose of washing they will invest in washeries you give them the assurance linkages of cooking coal and they will pay you with reference to the market price but linkage should be available because washery you cannot put for 2 years 3 years 5 years once you are installing the uh, battery it uh, uh, the washery it should be installed for a period of 20 to 25 years but unless this uh, assured supply of coke is available to the industry then they will not be able to make uh, investment uh, in uh, 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 washeries so this is the request which i have made and maybe the government is also very sincere as far as uh, the pollution is concerned as far as this uh, greenhouse gases are concerned and they have been working wholeheartedly with the ministry to see to it that uh, we cut down the uh, consumption of met coal uh, in the blast furnaces so let us hope that we will be able to uh, work together and we will be having some uh, strategy i won't say that we will be able to bring it down to zero but definitely we will be able to cut it down uh, significantly and i feel even if we are able to bring down the emission by 40 to 50% over a period of time by adopting all these methods the industry which is having a average co2 emission of uh, 1.95 in making uh, uh, 1.95 ton in making 1 ton of steel it can simply be brought down to a level of somewhere around 1 or 1.1 over a period of time maybe it can be brought down by 50% say in the next uh, i would say 10 to 15 years it can be brought down to this level and if we work more sincerely and we are able to find the alternative fuel uh, for iron making through this uh, dri route again it will not be zero it will not be carbon neutral we can bring it down substantially like if we make steel through dri ef route the pollution level can definitely be bring down to a level of uh, say we can cut it down by around 70% here i'm talking of 50% there it is uh, 70% of course if we are able to get hydrogen as a fuel in dri which again i would say it is a distant reality it is going to take some time because friends for making one ton of uh, 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 steel or iron you made uh, you, you you need at least 150 kg of hydrogen and today the price of the green hydrogen is somewhere around 450 uh, uh, kg uh, 450 rupees per kg so you can very well understand the cost of the fuel if we are able to get uh, uh, hydrogen at an economical price definitely that will help us in bringing down the emission substantially so this is all from my side and uh,
the points which i have prepared i have discussed with the number of technologists the persons who are working in research and development and the persons who have actually worked in blast furnaces for a very very long time so i have taken my guidance from them and also from my experience of uh, working with sale as uh, 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 chairman and before that as director of finance and before that in some technical areas also as a uh, uh, their uh, uh, i would say finance support i have learnt all these things so i believe uh, this is enough for the day as we go more and more technologies will be evolving we will keep on discussing that how we can uh, work together to bring down the emissions further thank you thank you so much uh, that was such a comprehensive and insightful uh, initial address from you just a few questions from my side before uh, we throw open the floor to the audience uh, sir we have spoken about you know the, the many uh, parameters for improving efficiency in bfs right uh, and uh, do you think uh, that uh, indian industries indian the leading mills in india today uh, will take up the challenges that that are required uh, to uh, you know bolster their esg profiles or also because uh, steel is a global commodity and because steel uh, is traded globally and uh, now that uh, you know measures like uh, carbon border adjustments are happening in europe so even for steel exports uh, it will be will it be essential for the leading mills at least to uh, you know shore up their uh, carbon profiles and uh, and to try to make green steel definitely that is going to be the requirement of the day and we cannot avoid it if we are not able to fulfill that definitely we will have to cut down on our exports to europe or we have to pay the uh, tax there first of all like uh, european buyers may not prefer to get a steel which is uh, having uh, uh, carbon emission added to it so we have to comply with it but as i said that it is going to take some time if the world has kept the 2050 as the target and we have kept the 2070 as the target we may have to wait for some more time if uh, we have to cut down the uh, carbon completely from the steel industry it is going to be a difficult task because as i said that we have recently added 38 million ton or we are going to add 38 million ton of capacity steel making capacity through bf route we have invested uh, 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 largely in uh, uh, these furnaces so these are going to last for another 35 to 40 years maybe 2060 2065 these furnaces will be functioning only so we cannot say that we will be able to bring uh, to to uh, cut it down to zero but definitely we should work and to bring it down to a level which is acceptable otherwise exports will be very difficult particularly to european countries the exports will be very difficult and today you are able to make money because european countries are willing to pay you a very high price if we look at today in the domestic market if the price is say 70 or 72000 rupees per ton for hrc the uh, european markets on cfr basis they are willing to pay you 1250 euro that is the price today for exports uh, from india or from asia to uh, european countries going forward if they are asking for green steel definitely the price will be higher and we will be missing on that opportunity if we are not able to cut down the greenhouse gases in steel making yes sir point taken uh, sir now to you know bring the discussion to a little uh, more technical level Uh, sir my question to you uh, as a novice uh, sir if we compare coke uh, with hydrogen as a reductant uh, which is a better performer coke or hydrogen no coke and hydrogen they have the different uses you cannot replace coke with hydrogen you can only substitute coke to the extent of 15% uh, yeah, you can have a substitute fuel as hydrogen because in blast furnace technology coke is required and you cannot like uh, simply do away with the coke the only thing is you can increase the uh, uh, usage of hydrogen up to 15% so they are not substitute yes hydrogen when you have you can always go in for the dri making direct reduced iron you can technologies are available today you have the hyl technology from tenova uh, you have the uh, 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 this uh, bidrex technology from sms so these technologies are available and worldwide these technologies are there in use so you can go in for dri in that case and you can cut down the emissions very significantly even as, as i said earlier that if you use natural gas in dri vis a vis uh, 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 this uh, uh, blast furnace route you are able to bring down your emission by 70% 
of course but natural gas should be used as a fuel since in our country the natural gas is very expensive like if you today want to set up a steel plant in kingdom of saudi arabia you will be able to get natural gas at a price of uh, just two dollar per uh, mm btu whereas in our country if you want to set it you will have to pay a price of 12 dollar minimum i'm talking of the normal circumstances today it may be much much higher but i'm talking of the normal circumstances so if you have the hydrogen going for the dri route dri ef route but again in ef route electricity uh, will be a cost that's why if you see despite compulsion of uh, carbon uh, uh, stopping the or reducing the carbon emission uh, despite compulsion of uh, uh, government pursuing the green steel uh, various governments we are still putting up the new capacity through blast furnace route only because of the economy it is highly economical you can have the bulk production of steel the cost remains uh, very low when we compare it with the dri ef route these are the reasons yes sir uh, and sir because you are also speaking about gasification that it is sometime in the future uh, now but gas gasification also sir for a high ash indian coal uh, what what are the technical uh, problems for that gasification what is the uh, product actually? that's what i said yes. that's what i said even if you want to go in for the syn gas we have to really see the suitability of the indian coal for the purpose of syn gas if you continue to import coal for making uh, for for doing the uh, gasification then it is a problem so we have to develop a technology which is helpful to us which uh, help us to uh, uh, bring the thin gas by using the indian coal so that's why these concepts have not catched up to uh, a large extent except on the drawing board or except in the conference rooms we have been discussing at various places and uh, people have been talking about it but we have not been able to implement them because of the reasons because required inputs are not available or whatever inputs are available how to use them effectively and logically to bring down the cost or to bring down the emission for us that is missing something exactly sir um, sir also now that you spoke about uh, carbon capture storage and utilization from the blast furnace we know that the in, in japan it is happening Uh, with the course 50 uh, uh, the the program of the government which the ministry is also supporting uh, right. sir, uh, sir for india uh, sir what kind of technological and design and engineering changes have to be brought about in the blast furnace infrastructure uh, to adopt to uh, carbon capture and storage and utilization blast furnace will remain the same only thing you have to develop the technology for capturing the co2 from the atmosphere and it is there in many countries like uh, bel in our country they have entered into some collaboration with some french company and they have al already developed a prototype now first prototype then you have to do it at a pilot scale then you can go in for the commercial purpose the blast furnace design will remain the same the only thing you have to develop a technology of uh, capturing this uh, co2 uh, uh, or the gases uh, uh, which is which, which are having a co2 concentration then converted into hydrogen then from hydrogen it can be converted into electricity this is how like uh, the world has been working capture co2 co2 to hydrogen hydrogen to uh, electricity but till that time whatever hydrogen you capture you can always use it for the purpose of uh, uh, ethanol methanol or uh, for the purpose of fertilizers today if you see large usage of cbm is happening for the purpose of uh, this making fertilizer we have learned how to make fertilizer from natural gas but the world is now moving towards uh, from cbm to fertilizer uh, even in sr group we are having a matrix fertilizer in raniganj where we have access to the large uh, cbm we are making fertilizer from cbm to uh, 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 from 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 cbm so we are capturing carbon out of it and then carbon is converted into uh, fertilizer so these are the uses which are evolving now since we have started putting our heads together we have started emphasizing the need for uh, reducing the pollution or reducing the co2 from the atmosphere so we are working on all these technologies the world has started working on all these technologies maybe it will take some more time and in our country also tata steel has already put up a plant 5 ton per day they have already put up a plant for carbon capture now for them the problem is that how to use it you cannot store it so you cannot put it somewhere underground how much you will put it underground 
so that is also harmful so you have to learn the uses uh, uses of this uh, uh, carbon co2 once you have captured it how to make use of it absolutely sir absolutely. last for this technology will remain the same yes sir and sir uh, one quick question on hydrogen now that uh, because we are speaking about hydrogen and use, ease of hydrogen blast furnaces and now about this uh, hydrogen mission of the government and uh, enhancing the capacity sir how, how do you see india placed in terms of renewable electricity and renewable hydrogen going forward uh, renewable electricity we have still a long way to travel because today if you see the contribution of uh, renewable uh, uh, renewable energy it is just maybe 30 35% is the contribution balance is still coming from the thermal power 70% of the our electricity is still coming from the thermal power plants so we have a uh, long way to go once you have the hydrogen as i said there is hydrogen can be used for the purpose of uh, converting into electricity and gradually we can phase out the old thermal power uh, thermal power plants which are uh, polluting the atmosphere but it is going to take a time now if you see the government has been talking of increasing the coal production to 1 billion ton and ultimately by 25 coal india also says they want to go to 1.5 billion ton so if you are increasing the production of uh, coal naturally the consumption will also increase consumption is not going to come down for uh, some time and particularly with the current geopolitical developments uh, or uh, uh, whatever conflict is there because of this the prices are going to get skyrocketed and under the circumstances the country has to go in for more production uh, to keep a uh, tab on the prices to keep a check on the prices so production has to be increased consumption will also increase now going forward definitely we have to look at that how we can leverage this available first the availability of hydrogen should be there of course many business houses they have been working on it and we have been assured that after maybe 4 5 years we will be able to get uh, uh, hydrogen at a price of 1 uh, per kg if that happens i feel that many of the problems can be taken care of but these houses have yet to demonstrate how this will happen they have been talking we have been talking that we will make india as the hydrogen hub how that will happen that is evolving that we have been discussing and maybe it will be put into place in the coming 2 to 3 years so i would say let us uh, 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 watch and wait that how the things move but i am sure india will be able to get the hydrogen at uh, 1 us dollar per kg in the time to come if not in 5 years maybe in 10 years we will, we are moving towards that uh, sir one quick question from a member of the audience uh, who's been waiting for a long time Uh, can you please give us uh, you know some idea about the domestic metro price and, and the near term outlook for the metro price i know this is not the platform to talk about prices but still because the question is so important now with, with coking coal prices having gone to record highs uh, maybe if hmm. you could just give an answer no what i suggest that uh, uh, today all prices are governed or particularly the coal and coke prices they are governed by the international prices and uh, whosoever has raised this question he also knows that coke is made from coal and in our country today the coke which is meant for merchant market for merchant purposes it is made from 100% imported coal and the yield of coal to coke is 69% so you can very well work out what will be the cost of if the coal of uh, cost of coal today is 660 it is fob you add another 40 50 dollar towards the Uh, CFR, maybe another forty dollar. So it will be seven hundred dollar. Now seven hundred dollar coal price and the coke price, you can very well work out. It will be somewhere around one thousand rupees, one uh, thousand uh, dollar per ton. That is uh, is the price today. One thousand dollar means maybe seventy seventy five thousand rupees per ton, seventy seven thousand rupees per ton. That is the price today. But of course, this is a very temporary phenomena. As you must have seen yesterday, the nickel prices touch. a high all time high of uh, 100000 dollar per ton after which the uh, uh, this trading had to be suspended so same is there with most of the commodities that is the price and domestic there is no availability of domestic coke the uh, domestic coal the coal is imported that is converted into coke rice and that is sold as coke in the market so it is derived from the coal prices 
maybe if somebody is having old coal he may be able to sell you say 800 850 dollar per ton 900 dollar per ton so that is an exception but if we go by the current prices it should be somewhere around 1000 rupees uh, 1000 dollar per ton yeah very interesting uh, topic that is the level and very relevant uh, currently also lme is suspending you know trading uh, yesterday uh, which brings me to the question of domestic coking coal why are you importing so much uh, as sir rightly said that there is not, not many washeries uh, that uh, cil has yes uh, yes but if sir, you actually uh, so sorry to uh, cut no, you no, off please 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 yes uh, but sir, actually i have heard that the common complaint is that uh, our domestic coal is not that uh, not that high grade you know like uh, australia has or like uh, you know other other countries have so what is the need of building washeries when we have to import so okay this- mr nirmalya both the things are there one our production is low second our uh, domestic coking coal is not of the good quality but it can always be used as a blend you know what tata steel has been doing they are having uh, their west bokaro mines and they are having two washeries at west bokaro and jamadova they are able to bring down the ash in some of their washeries to as low as 17% and they have been mixing it with the imported coal and uh, uh, they have been making a blend which is acceptable to the coke ovens so i'm not saying you go for 100% usage of the domestic coal that is not possible i also know because the domestic coking coal which we get it contains ash of somewhere around 30 plus then even if you wash it down you will not be able to bring it down to a level of below 20 20 21 you will not be able to do that this is how we have also been getting uh coal from uh, 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 subsidiaries of coal india whether it is bccl or ccl that is the level once we requested them you wash it to the level of uh, say 17% and they said that yield will come down to only 25% or 20% and the cost will go up by somewhere by another 50% quality is low but we can always use it as a good blend because the ash which is available in uh, australian coal or in uh, uh, coal which you are getting from uh, uh, canada tech coal is there or in mozambique ic valley there or in uh, ussr uh, sorry in usa uh, we are getting uh, from contura and alpha these are the companies ash is just 8 to 9% and in coke we are keeping the ash somewhere around 13 to 13.5 so we can always blend it with the uh imported uh, coal and we can use it in the coke oven batteries it is very much workable and as far as this uh, production is concerned if you recall in 2009 when mr partho bhattacharya he was the cmd of uh, coal india he made a call that they will invest 10000 crore in extracting the bat coal which is there in this jharia rani ganj region but somehow that could not uh, that that, uh, that could never materialize now we wanted to do sale wanted to do tasra i believe one of the question is there on tasra also you didn't mention it but i saw it so one of the question is regarding tasra also that lease is expiring in 2023 we want to do it and we started it also then it went into problems and uh, uh, we could not get that whether we will be able to get the renewal of lease or not next year 23 it is coming to an end if we are not able to get renewal of the uh, lease why to go in for appointment of the md also we are in a fix the company has been in a fix they have not been able to take any decision about that so these are the reasons that at many places the production is held up tasra would have helped us to bring down our coal uh, import requirement drastically and i am sure if given the availability of the coking coal in the country many of the companies in the private sector they would like to bring down their uh, imports of coking coal from abroad that is possible we can use it as a blend without affecting uh, much of the productivity but so the so, long term uh, plans of sourcing from russia uh, could, could have been disturbed because of the sourcing country. from russia again the same problem is there there i can share with you russia does not have the uh, reserves of good quality hard coking coal they have soft coking coal available they have pca coal available and you can check up with the tata steel or jspl so far they have been importing only pci coal they are not importing hard coking coal from russia or soft coking coal they have been importing so russia is not going to help us to that extent as we have been thinking so many delegations went in 2019 at least four times i sent my uh, director raw material to russia to explore this but not many companies came and those who came they were not able to give us the uh, coal which is equivalent to 
say Australian hard poking coal. Nature has given best of the coals to Australia only. And that too in the Bowen Basin, they have been uh, uh, bestowed with the best of the reserves there. So Russian coals are not going to be substituted. But of course, if there is a compulsion, definitely we have to go in for uh, buying the Russian coal. And uh, we have to make some changes in our uh, blending so that we are able to use Russian coals in place of Australian coals if the availability is not there. Today, what is the reason that 90% of the coal, coking mat coal is being imported? And many of the private sector companies, they are importing 100% coal from Australia or 100% uh, uh, from the uh, 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 countries abroad. They are not using domestic coal because of the productivity. So I feel if it is made available and the uh, other coals are not available, even Russian coal can also be used. But Russian coal should also be made available. Evocation is a problem because most of the coal is available in the Far East. And the ocean freight is going to be very, very high. It may be double the just, just double or maybe two and a half times of what we get from the Australia to the east coast of India. So Russia can be a good substitute if we are able to get the good quality coal. And uh, second, we are able to uh, bring down the cost of logistics. But we have to go by the overall cost, CFR cost at our port. If it is higher in getting from Russia, and Russia will also give you on the basis of index, as most of the companies are doing. If you have to get it at the index, then why not to go for a good quality coal? And then why to go for Russian coal? That question comes. Absolutely, sir. And uh, sir, one last question from my side, uh, because now I see that Indian steelmakers are going more and more for PCI from different sources, and they're trying to increase uh, PCI consumption in blast furnace. So, but there is a limit. So, uh, I mean, what is the limit uh, for that PCI consumption in, con in, in conventional blast furnaces? What is there that, uh, as I said, that you need a minimum amount of fuel, uh, fuel rate or minimum amount of fuel, carbon, to reduce iron ore into the molten iron. And that varies from 530 kg per ton of hot metal to 550, 560 kg. So, earlier it was thought that uh, 100 kg is the limit. Then it was thought 150 kg is the limit. Then we thought 200 kg is the limit. And today, if you see many of the furnaces uh, worldwide, they have been using PCI as high as 250 to 260 kg per ton of hot metal. So I feel there is uh, no limit. I feel there is no limit. Whatever you are able to achieve, and you are able to produce uh, iron at an economical rate, but of course, some quantity of uh, coke would be required because coke is able to give the required carbon, which is not available to that extent from the PCI coal. Heat is there. PCI coal, basically, it gives you a heat and also the uh, uh, reducent, but not to that extent as it is there from uh, 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 coke. So I have seen that com companies have achieved, or the, in many countries, they have achieved the coke rate of, say, somewhere around 285 to 300. So that is the limit. Uh, what I say that uh, maybe 300 uh, or, or to 290 uh, kg of coke and uh, 250 uh, kg of uh, uh, this PCI, maybe another 10 to 20 kg of uh, uh, this nut coke, which is used along with the uh, BF coke. Yes, sir. <laughs> but you can go. You can go 240, 250, even 260 also many companies have achieved. You can go to that level. 200 plus is very common. Uh, sir, I'm afraid uh, we are hopefully short of time today, and that has been a very, very engaging uh, uh, webinar at that. Uh, many thanks, many, many thanks, sir, for sharing your precious insights on a topic of great importance for the industry today. Uh, I would again thank the Ministry of Steel, Government of India, for extending this support to engage, and also the Indian Steel Association, as well as our esteemed sponsors, JSW Steel, Tata Steel, and NMDC. Thank you, everybody. Good day, sir. No, thanks to you also for uh, uh, inviting me. And uh, it has been a good platform to uh, discuss the uh, various issues. Let us hope that uh, next year onward, we will be able to have a physical uh, meeting instead of virtual platform, because that gives you a chance to interact with the participants. And you learn many things when you interact with the participants. Absolutely. So thanks a lot. Thanks once again uh, Thank to Mr. Nirmalya and his team and uh, making it uh, uh, or uh, 
say putting it so beautifully that i didn't face any problem normally when you enter a virtual webinar you always face some problem link is not working or uh, there is but here it has absolutely been smooth the coordination has been very very good from your side and from the side of your colleagues thank you very much thank you so much sir that was kudos okay.